Now that is quite an interesting attraction site for tourists and this evening we are discussing tourism in Kenya in, with a focus on domestic tourism. Now last year according to the Kenya Tourism Board the bed nights for domestic tourism stood at 3.97 million which was nine, a 9% 9 growth from 2017 which was at 3.65 million. Now on set I am joined by David Iteo, he is the business development manager at Crown Eagle Safaris. Welcome, Mr. Iteo. Thank you. And Lamek Maranga, he is the manager at Suburb Adventures. Thank you. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. You have heard about the growth that there was in domestic tourism last year. Yeah. What do you think are the drivers of that growth? We can start with you, Lamek. Uh, thank you. I believe uh, the growth up to that has been, especially from marketing, uh, which has been done pretty well by the Kenya Wildlife uh, Service, uh, and the Expos, the Kenya Tourism Board, and the Ministry at large. As well, the local tour operators have done most, a uh, big part of it, because they are really putting up packages to influence uh, the local. I believe that's uh, one impact on it. What is different now, uh, now that more domestic tourists are taking up um, tourism in Kenya? What is different now that was not there maybe five years ago? Uh, what is in the industry now is that uh, we are having a lot of holiday makers coming from up country, and that thing was not there some time back, let's say like five years ago. But nowadays, people travel all the way from Kakamega, Kisumu, uh, Nyeri, and they do holidays to Mombasa, Dubai, Thailand, Mauritius. So we can really say that uh, Kenyans are really picking up. Kenyans are picking up. Yeah. Um, what about the issue of infrastructure in those particular sites that people visit? Maybe you can get to Masai Mara, but the roads there are not as good. What do you think about the infrastructure in the sites maybe that you deal in? Uh, like Amboseli, I can say it is now accessible. You can access Amboseli using even a small car. But uh, we have an issue with uh, Masai Mara. I think uh, they need to, to resume that work, the, the, the work that was being done on the roads so that even clients can enjoy their rides. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, in terms of infrastructure. Uh, for example, the SGR has really improved uh, the transportation from Nairobi to Mombasa. And uh, there has been a lot of uh, uh, fixing on airport and small airstrips, which is also a good thing because uh, clients who want to fly to destinations can make that possible. For example, in Lodwa, you see Masema, we're also putting up more airstrips. Yeah. And what about tour companies? There are um, offers that they, they give their their clients, mm -hmm. so that now someone maybe thinks that it is now cheaper. What is the impact of tour companies in Kenya with a focus on domestic tourism? The impact of uh, tour operators in Kenya, especially it's about negotiating the rates for the clients. Uh, for example, if a client is booking directly for their packages, the rates will of course be higher. But if a tour operator is negotiating the rates for them, then package it from airlines, hotels, to transportation down on the ground, the packet gets a bit cheaper, which is also a good incentive and makes it cheaper and easier for even clients who don't have a lot of money to travel around Kenya. Yeah. What kind of offers are these? What is it that is reducing these prices? What is reducing these prices? As, uh, for example, in hotels, we have now many camps coming up and hotels, uh, in, which has in, increased the competition, which is a good thing. When there's a competition, uh, when the competition is high, sorry, uh, that means then the rates go higher, uh, go lower which also improves and makes the system flow a bit uh, easier than it used to be in five years maybe back. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you can tell us what is, what are the, what's the difference between the spending habits of international tourists and maybe domestic tourists? Okay. When it comes to, to domestic tourists, you realize that uh, most of them, they are after, they're like uh, for economic recovery, whereby they want the cheapest packages possible. And now you realize that, uh, like uh, international market, when they are looking for a, when they are shopping for a holiday, they plan early in advance. So you realize that the, with them, they don't like mind how much they will get for a trip. But now they want to get the quality of it. So you realize that, like they are planning, like uh, if they want to travel to Kenya, they plan like a year in advance. So you give them a quote early in advance, they start preparing for that. But you realize with us or Kenyans, we are mostly last minute clients. So you realize by we need to get the like affordable packages. We are talking about like uh, going to Masai Mara for three days, you get a package for th th uh, 13,500 shillings. And that comes with two nights accommodation, meals on full board and return transport from Nairobi. So that has made it 
more affordable for Kenyans, and that is what they like most. So uh, Kenyans, if they like start planning early in advance, you realize that now the spending power will be a bit high. But at the moment, I'll say it's still low. Hello. Yes. I think uh, most Kenyans don't embrace the local market. Uh, most people will prefer, for example, flying to Zanzibar, uh, whereas we have a beach in Kenya. You can go to Lamu, you can do Diani. Uh, people will prefer maybe to fly to Dubai just for a desert safari or for a shopping spree. And yet here in Kenya, if you go up to the north at Chalbi Desert, at the Northern Hall, we have an amazing experience over there. Just the same thing at a cheaper price. So probably we overlook what we have at home, and this is something we should also work on, maybe in sensitizing people. And um, I believe most, most people also don't embrace holidays. Holidays don't come as a priority in people's budget down here. Uh, people are looking at they would rather go out and you know hang out and drink with friends but then this kind of experience is not in them if you get it well for most international tourists the purpose of their visits is holidaying around 73 yeah. percent then business and conferences right. around 13 yeah. percent thereabout so do you think that this can be borrowed for domestic tourism and how maybe can the counties work together to improve that yes i think that's possible because what people need is information Information is power. Now with the social media, marketing is getting a bit easier and cheaper for people. Uh, that way, most people are getting the information even in the local. And uh, for example, the insight that we just had from KBC is really good because people now, even in Naivasha and Nakuru who didn't know about the experience they can pick from there, can try it. Yeah. Yeah, true. So for the counties, what they, can, they need to do is to showcase what they have in their counties. And uh, when they showcase what they have, that will be like information which will be power to Kenyans. And they will want, they'll know that if I want to like enjoy uh, the beach life, I'll get it in Mombasa. If I want to enjoy like uh, the lake life, I can get it in Kisumu, I can get it in Akuru or in Naivasha. So what I can just say is that we need the counties to showcase what they have so that people can get the information and know about it. I think another thing is also about, it comes about uh, maybe the park and um, attraction management. They need also to send the information to the locals. When uh, something is appreciated down in the local, information will spread a bit faster. Yeah. And when the information spreads, then people will appreciate it better. If you get a good experience, of course, you'll want to come back again or you want to try something else on the next county. So that way when they intershare, it's easier to make the flow move. Yeah. So sensitization and marketing is important. Is the key. Is the Definitely. key. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the source markets for Kenya's tourism. Um, according to that Kenya Tourism Board report, USA was at 11.12%. It leads as our tourism source market. Tanzania is second at 10.48, and Uganda is 10.08. Those are our immediate neighbors. Mm -hmm. What more can be done? I said again, more marketing and more sensitization. I think we need more visibility. Even if um, I was discussing earlier with him, even if we have a terror attack or something bad that has happened down here, what people need is consistency in the market. When people see you all the time, when, people, when you nag people all the time, they'll want to try you. So for example, internationally, if we market a product today, we should not get to the comfort zone and feel that we have made it. We should keep on reminding people all the time. For example, in being in exhibitions, uh, branding the country, branding the, the attractions. This should be done by the government, the KTB, the, as I said, attraction management and all that, and the okay. tour operators as well. Okay. Yeah, just to add on what he has said, uh, marketing is the key, as you know, because uh, we need to do a lot of marketing. Because like, I remember in December we had uh, so many clients coming from uh, Fort Lauderdale, New Jersey, that is in the States. And uh, when we were trying to interact with them and we were asking them about uh, how beautiful our country is, they were like, yes, the, the country is very beautiful. But now the question was, how did you know about Kenya? Okay. So I thought maybe they will tell me that uh, maybe they, 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 met, they met like uh, our people in maybe one of the exhibitions, but they told us, no, we got the information from a friend. So that simply means that uh, uh, Kenya has not really marketed itself well because we have a lot that we need to showcase to the other countries, to other nations, to other continents, so that it is very easy for them to, to start interacting with us. Another thing is that when we market our country very well and showcase what we have here in Kenya, you realize that it will give even the tour operator an easy and humble time to convince client compared to when now you are reaching a client for the first time. You want to explain to a client where, where is Kenya, what is Kenya, what is in Kenya. 
you realize it gives us a lot of a lot of time or a lot of work to convince a client but when the government will chip in and uh, the ministry of tourism and market through through the magical kenya they can work hand in hand with the with the, the driver guides you know by so that they can get like very good photography lectures and will be good yeah, yeah. I also think uh, uh, the government needs to give maybe the two operators an opportunity, a better opportunity, of course, to do the external market. Uh, in terms of, I'm speaking about not letting an opportunity go. If there's an exhibition or an expo anywhere where the, whereby Kenya has been invited, or even the government itself has seeked for that, they should give uh, the two operators a chance to do that. Because then when we have more visibility, as I said a bit earlier, then people will start changing their mind if they had thought of going to Tanzania, they again think about trying Kenya as well, which is a good thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and again, just to add on that, you realize that Kenya, we have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of tourist attractions, more than any other country here in, in East Africa. So it is all about marketing, then they empower the tour operators, especially the young tour operators, so that they can go out there and tell people what Kenya is, what they are good in, it, what they have, and that one will will enable uh, Kenya to aim higher when it comes to uh, international market. Okay. Yeah. What do you think will drive growth of the tourism sector this year? That's a nice one. A good uh, question. I, I believe uh, especially the weather that we have. Yeah. You can see we have the, the global warming. Most countries are having a very tough I mean, if it's winter, it's very extreme. If it's uh, summer, it's very extreme. So that way, most people want to travel and go out. And uh, of course, now with the content market that uh, hotels are doing and online marketers, I think that's also improving because then people want to see and try what's this Kenya. And of course, uh, noting the new places, the new gems. When people hear about something new, even if they've been to the country, they will still want to come back and try the other thing. I think that's one thing. And security, of course, now we are, I've seen the government is really restraining the security, especially if you see at the coastline, the hotels and all that, they have lobbies all over, which is a good thing for stability and yeah, more tourism. Uh, it is just security. When we have security in the country, that is it. Then now marketing, as we've said, that is the only factors that can uh, make the, the tourism growth the next level. Okay. Yeah. Of course, uh, the French president was here and uh, President Uhuru said that that particular visit will help boost tourism in the country. Now, let's talk about the increased flights of, um, interna not international, local flights, increased uh, frequencies, as well as the licensing of international flights to fly directly to Moi International Airport in Mombasa, rather than pass through Nairobi and then connect to Mombasa. What will be the impact of that on the tourism sector? Definitely. The prices will be a bit cheaper. Yeah. Uh, with the flight interconnection, I believe most people want to do that because they don't want long flights, especially the old age, who really spend uh, quite a good amount of money for their holidays because they are doing it as a maybe retirement holiday or a honeymoon, uh, post-honeymoon, I could call it. Uh, that's a good thing for the international. And for the locals, the local tourism will, more, will be more embraced because then uh, people cannot drive long distances or people who thought flights are more expensive. Now you can see even online, air, airlines are competing on the price range. You get a flight to Mombasa at around 4,000. I mean, that way somebody would think 40 minutes with 4,000 to Mombasa, that's okay. And then package it for, up for me and let me, get, let me get a chance to travel as well. Yeah, I think by the increase of flights, that will simply mean that now uh, holiday will be made affordable. Because now we have had issues, maybe, for example, during Easter period, you realize that you want to travel to Mombasa, yes, but the SGR is fully booked. Now you realize, uh, people start thinking, should I, go on, should I go by road and take 10 hours on the road? That's like a waste of day. So it, it will be like, if you're going for three days, you've wasted two days traveling. So by the increase of flights, we will have more Kenyans traveling locally. And about the international flight, going directly to Mombasa, that will really, really, really drive in traffic because now, as my, as my friend has just said, that uh, we have many, most visitors who come from abroad, they are old people. And the old people, they don't want the, like, the long flights. So that will really, really, really make them even feel more comfortable booking holidays in Mombasa. Locally, sorry. 
You know? No, I'm uh, talking about international. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, because I'm also thinking about the local market. This will improve uh, business travelers to make it uh, easy for them. Yeah. Because somebody will think about, I'm um, flying from Nairobi to Lodo in the morning, uh, do some business maybe in the county, and fly back to Nairobi. So as a, that way, somebody will be more motivated to also invest in a place, you know, which also is an economic impact to the government generally. Yeah. Um, definitely the tourism sector is driven also by the hospitality industry. We have about 68 global brands uh, in the hotel industry in Kenya. That is quite a good number. What do you think can be done to improve this and even uh, better our hospitality industry? Maybe we can start with you. What we need to do is um, we need like, to attract more investors here so that we can get even more other brands. Because you realize the brands that we have, they, they are not like, they are not sufficient. You realize like, you, he can confirm that. In December, you realize all the hotels are fully booked and still Kenyans want to travel. So I still believe that we, we don't have more. We need more. I think we also need to look at the, the online portals. I think the major challenge that most two operators are facing is based on this. Because um, we, of course, have agreements with the hotels, which give us, gives us a, an, an upper hand to get a discount. But when you look at uh, the fluctuation between that and what you get online, maybe on last minute sale, uh, then sometimes somebody doesn't see the sense they should, be, they should book a holiday with you. And uh, because after the government and all those big brands have been done, the local tour operators are the ones who are driving numbers as well. I mean, at least 70% of that is done by the local uh, tour, tour operators. And if they have a chance to sell a product, a hotel, for example, then they also deserve a uh, better treat from them in terms of maybe re re retreats as well, recreationals, and the rates, basically. We cannot ignore the presence of technological disruption. Yes, uh, about true. Airbnb. Yes. They are offering very cheap rates. Yes, yeah. that's true. And uh, how does that affect maybe the business of tour companies as well as the hotel um, bookings maybe? Quite a lot. Quite a lot because basically uh, everybody uh, wants to save at the end of the day. So when you travel to a place, the first thing you're looking at is how much am I spending on my budget? And if I can get a better deal for the same pro product at this place, I'll buy this than yours. So I think this is also something that we need to maybe inter, uh, we incorporate or something with the hotels and have a discussion with the Kenya Hotel uh, management and have an agreement on board. For example, most of these deals come on last minute basis. And uh, when you look at online, prob prob probably an hotel is at $100, sorry. And, um, at my agreement, I have it at maybe 120. So if I tell the client, I've sold the hotel by telling the client, I'll book in Masemara at this and this lodge, that way the client already is going online to check on the hotel. And once he's checking the hotel, he's comparing with what you're giving. And this is a big challenge. So if we don't have that mutual agreement and mutual benefit, for example, then it's hard for us also to, to sell packages. Yeah. I think uh, hotel management, they need to do something, especially when it comes to dealing with the two operators and uh, when dealing with the online systems. Because you realize that, as my friend said, most of clients nowadays, when they, they request for a quotation, they also check online. What am I getting online and what am I getting from the two operator? So you realize there is high possibility and high chances of two operator losing that business for online, online, online portals. So hotels need to consider and understand that uh, we tour operators, we depend on them. And at the same time, they depend on us. So they need to sit down and uh, like think about um, uh, a mutual agreement or come up with a mutual uh, agreement whereby it can benefit both of us. So the hotel benefits and the tour operator benefits. But if they give like better rates to, let's say like Jumia, I'm talking about these online systems, then two operators will lose. Yeah, basically, it's, uh, that's a big challenge that we can talk about the whole day. No. <laughs> yeah, so I think we should leave it for another time. But we cannot assume the, the internet, as you said, because now a client is sitting online, checking the hotel, checking where I can hire a vehicle and where I can hire a local guide, and then they want to package for themselves, which in future is losing the sense of uh, a travel agent and two operator. But I think it's also high time that we two operators become more maybe sensitized on how we can also up our game when working for the future, because definitely the, inter the internet is there and it's going to be there and maybe more dynamic. Definitely. Yeah. So what are the risks 
for tourism this year in Kenya? What are the risks that um, tour operators, hoteliers foresee? You go first. I think um, the biggest risk we are facing at the moment is uh, from the past issues we've been having, especially in uh, security and all that. Most people frown back, and they, as much as they were maybe already inquiring, they will take a step back to reconfirm. What we need is reassurance from maybe the government, from the ministries that are involved, to make people feel comfortable. Otherwise, then we are losing big numbers to other countries, to our neighbors and all that. And another risk, of course, now that is the, the other point, is that the neighbor countries are doing a bigger, bigger visibility out there. You can see, for example, what Rwanda is doing. They're branding almost everywhere. And what are we left with? People now want to try what is in Rwanda. People want to go to just see maybe the hills and the genocide. But look at what we have from up to Kana, as I said, down Magadi, Baringo, Bogoria. All these lakes, all these hills, all these mountains, the experience, the weather, the nature, you know, people should come here and unwind, but we need more and more in marketing. Okay. Yeah. What's the future of tourism? Um, tourism has a very, big, a very big and bright future, according to me and according to uh, a true operator perspective. Uh, has, has we said Ali, that uh, there is a lot that can be done, especially when we improve on our security so that clients are comfortable with the countries they are booking holidays to. It will be an upper hand for us, and tourism will really grow. Apart from that, we need to, to think about, uh, to think about uh, this thing we call park entrance fees. You realize sometimes clients come, though especially those who are on budget, you realize if he's a foreigner uh, going to Masai Mara for a budget, for, for like a budget camp, client pays uh, hotel and transport, it's about 10,000 shillings. But when it comes to park entrance fee, client ends up paying $160, which is equivalent to 16,000 Kenya shilling. So you realize that the park entrance fee is more expensive than even the, the package itself. So you realize uh, at, that pl at, at that point, we tend to lose a lot of business compared to our neighbor, neighboring countries. You see, you realize that like park entrance fee for a non-resident in Tanzania is about, is equivalent to like 2,000 Kenyan shillings. So you realize they'll say, uh, if we go to Tanzania, we will get value for our money than going to Kenya. So the ministry need to check on that. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we had for this particular interview. But we thank you for your time and your insight on the tourism industry. Thank you. That was David Iteo, Business Development Manager at Crowned uh, Eagle Safaris, and Lamek Maranga, from the manager at Suburb Adventures. Thank you, gentlemen.